we're ready to start. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I'd like to just uh, quickly um, give you a refresher on our new interface. Uh, I know the last time we looked at it and um, I showed you how the AutoTalist inter interface has changed. Um, there's just a few basic differences from the application that um, you originally saw when it launched. The main difference is that we've consolidated everything on this home screen that you can see now. Um, we've, we've combined all of the different types of analysis, the chart patterns, the Fibonacci patterns and key levels into a single view. Um, together with that, we have um, eliminated all the expired trading opportunities. Well, at least we've, we've separated the, them into two separate tabs at the bottom here. Uh, the grid at the bottom has got two tabs, active trading opportunities and expired. The idea of that is just so that um, we only present you with, with opportunities that are really still tradable and the ones that aren't get moved to expired opportunities just so that you don't have to waste your time sifting through stuff that is not really v uh, v relevant anymore. Um, very recently, like from in the last uh, couple of weeks or so, you will have noticed this area in the bottom uh, left of the screen. Uh, the little market watch vi uh, video window and the section on education um, just a couple of additions we've made recently we started this uh, this um, channel on YouTube where we have our um, analysts um, um, m most often it would be James Hirecheck very experienced trader um, on a daily basis he'll be posting new videos on um, stocks to watch um, in the equity space and we also occasionally do forex and commodities videos. So if you're interested, they mostly um, <coughs> U.S. equities, um, but I know you guys can probably trade it as well. So um, yeah, if you're interested, they're really short. It's like five minutes at the beginning of the day. We've also added a couple of videos here as well. The, the all introductory videos explaining different aspects of the software. So um, if you're new to it. I would suggest that you take the time and make yourself familiar with them and um, it's also not very long they vary between six and eight minutes or so each so it'll take you it won't take you very long to to go through them okay just very quickly again setting up a new search um, this uh, uh, window at the top left called searches is a list of all the different uh, searches that's been set up um, these eight, I think, are the defaults um, for for uh, your customers when they when they log in for the first time. Um, if you want to create a new search, just click on the new search button. It'll open up a new uh, little window where you can choose a group of symbols. Now there's quite a, a big variety of them: Australian stocks, commodities, currencies, Hong Kong indices, London, Malaysia, Nasdaq, Nikkei, NYSE, and Singapore. Any one of these you can select. Um, let's do, for example, the Australian Stock Exchange All Intraday. And just to keep it simple, click on Create Search, and you will have a brand new search in this window uh, with your criteria. Later on, you can also edit the search. Um, it will give you the option of setting advanced settings. Um, all of this is covered in detail in this um, in this new little video in our educational section called Setting Up Searches. So I'm not going to cover that today, but you are most welcome to um, to get the information from there. Okay, for today's um, presentation, I'm only going to uh, look at a single search just to keep things simple, and really what I want to um, cover is um, I, I want to just really show you how I use AutoChartist and um, uh, give you an idea of how to um, how to look at patterns how to sift through them and how to choose opportunities that you can really follow as, as, as viable trading opportunities and also I'll just sort of talk you through what I'm thinking as I'm looking at the patterns um, <clears throat> how I use the quality indicators and uh, how I navigate through the interface because after all the idea of order charters is to give you opportunities in a relatively short amount of time when a trader wants to um, 
when he sits down at his desk and says, I want to make a trade, I want to buy something, sell something, the, the question that most traders um, are stuck with is, well, where do I start? Uh, what do I do? Um, which stock should I look at? Because no, no single person can look at all you know, 10,000 stocks that are available to you on your, on your trading platform. So the purpose of Auto Charters is to help you um, to reduce that burden and to look at just where the really the nice trading opportunities are. I've, I've got a bit of a cold, so please excuse me if I have to mute myself every now and again to cough and splutter a bit. Um, but let's see how it goes. So remember, in this view, the active trading opportunities view, um, all of these are basically new, um, fresh trading opportunities, things that I can still trade. Now, previously, we just used to sort these as they came through. So as a new pattern was identified, it was listed on, on this grid. But lately, in the new version, what we've done was we've added this, this age column right at the, at the right, the very rightmost column called age. The age says how old the pattern is in terms of candles. Now this very top one you'll see is a, a 30 minute interval. Now that means every single candle on this graph represents 30 minutes. And the age is zero. So we've only just within the last 30 minutes or in the last 30 minutes of trading um, just before the mark is closed this pattern was identified. Um, the reason why we have the reason why we have um, listed the, the, the patterns in terms of age is to give you the freshest opportunities first. Now what used to happen is at the end of the day when the, uh, the, the end of day patterns came through at midnight or whenever they were identified then soon uh, in the morning after you get a lot of 30 minute and 60 minute patterns that that come and go they appear they go stale but they all push these um, these longer term patterns down the grid so what we've done was to say um, let's take a look at um, at keeping all the freshest opportunities no matter over which time frame they follow um, to keep them at the top of the list um, I'm sorry I think we have a little bit of an internet issue which I'll just quickly try and sort out if you can just bear with me for one second Okay, sorry about that. Okay. So, what I want to look at today is, um, you recall the results filter. I don't know if you recall the results filter. This is basically the section that we've um, put through, uh, put in place to allow you to very quickly adapt what the type of patterns that you're interested in. Um, <clears throat> because we've consolidated everything on this home screen, chart patterns, Fibonacci patterns, and key levels, all completed and emerging patterns. These used to be on separate tabs in separate grids. Now we've consolidated this into one single grid. Now the idea of the results filter is to um, just very quickly let you uncheck some of these things that you're not interested just so you can look at a very specific type of pattern. Now I've unchecked everything except completed patterns because this is the first type of uh, let's call it a strategy that I want to follow to look at um, what opportunities are available in the market. Now when I'm trading as well, um, you know, if I look at a chart pattern, the one minute, a, and then I look at a, 
uh, Fibonacci pattern the next and a key level the next my mind has to make a context switch every time to to sort of understand what it is that I'm looking at and that's why I've taken now I'm going to look at three different uh, three or four different strategies for for choosing uh, or, or yeah choosing uh, trade opportunities and each time I'm looking at a very specific type of, of pattern um, my first type of pattern that I'm looking at is chart patterns now chart patterns as you know uh, or completed chart patterns as you know are formed when price has broken through a support or resistance line that has formed a range um, <clears throat> so all of these patterns will have a breakout um, it will have a direction indicator and it will have a, a target level and um, I'm just going to click through a few of them to see which ones uh, kind of look appetizing for me now personally when I look at a list like this in this grid the first thing that I, that I want to that interests me is the length of the pattern the length of the pattern is a very good measure of how much time has gone by for this pattern to form for the market psychology to be um, you know to have time to to um, what is the word I'm looking for to be assimilated in the in the in the price <coughs> So yeah, my first my eye falls firstly on this longer term pattern, 76. I'm looking for something higher than 50, um, you know, from the 60s up into the 100. So those are the first ones I'm going to click on. This is a very nice pattern, um, Gallant Venture. Just looking at it quick, very quickly, you see it's a clear pattern. It's got a it's got a decent clarity rating. There's not too many or not too much noise. The uniformity is very high, which means that the, um, the touching points are spaced nice and evenly. Or, um, uh, yeah, they for for converging patterns like like triangles, the spacing is not always evenly, but it's consistent with the gradient of the support and resistance lines. So it's a very nicely uh, formed pattern. Um, in the quality indicators, I see breakout. Well. It's not very high. It's only a two-point breakout. However, um, this pattern is already three candles old, and there has been a move towards the downside after the breakout. So that counts in favor uh, um, for me as well. I'm clicking on the graph. Uh, if I click on the graph, it opens up a bit of a larger view. Here, it's clearer for you to see the the patterns that followed. We had a nice downward move after the breakout, so. Um, this I would definitely uh, jot down as a potential trading opportunity. I'm just going to make a couple of notes as we go along. Gallant. Um, <clears throat> the next one down, Keppel, this is 90, length 99. That's why I'm clicking on it. So literally, I'm just going through the list. Everything above 50 is what I'll be clicking on. Uh, clarity, you can see, is low. It's a bit spotty. There are a couple of gaps. Um, uniformity, oh, yeah, it's not great because we've got two turning points on this side of the graph, two turning points on that side of the graph, and a sort of a long stretch in between. And then there's a massive big gap um, that happened, which causes it to have a, an unnaturally high breakout level. Um, <clears throat> And something that bothers me a little bit is the fact that straight after breakout we had a little bit of a pullback. So what are the chances we're going to go down to the 306 level? Uh, I don't know. I'll rather keep looking for other opportunities. The next one above 50 is Singtel. This is quite a long-term pattern. 163. It's a triangle um, and triangles are <coughs> quite prevalent in a, in a sideways market and you can see the price action has been very much sideways up and down up and down and my breakout is not uh, very convincing the clarity is not very convincing I don't know it doesn't really grab me this pattern either the next one over length 50 is 87 it's the same um, it's the same symbol also Singtel this is just the pattern that formed on the latter half of the previous one. 
Oh no, I lie. No, it's that's true. They both they both um, end of day patterns. Yeah. So yeah, not a very great breakout. And what followed after that was a little bit of a pullback. I'd rather hang back on this one as well. Let's look at uh, Jardine Matheson. Yeah, immediately I think it's a nicely formed pattern. Clarity is not that great, although we've, we're giving it a, a, a clarity rating of 6. My eye tells me there's still a little bit of ups and downs in between. Uniformity is good. The breakout was pretty decent, but the follow-through wasn't really there for me. Um, this is tricky. I think I'm going to add this one to my list, but... Um, <coughs> what I do with this list is really what's the question and as we always um, s um, advise our clients when you when you when you have your list of trade opportunities that you want to follow from order chartist then that is not the time when you start opening trades at that time you are looking for confirmation um, and other opinions that underline and support what you what order charters has told you so typically with a pattern like this i would i would want to read something in the news about this company i mean uh, myself being in south africa i know very little about stocks on the singapore stock exchange but um, if you're there you've got a, a business newspaper at hand see if anything is happening on jardine matheson go to their website and see if anything has happened with them in the news and uh, add that information to your trading decision um, here is Jardine cycle and carriage I don't know if they are at all related mm, also an interesting looking pattern I like the way it looks it, it's easy on my eye uh, also nice breakout but also questionable follow through same thing I would also want to know what's happening with this with this company in the news and in, in my list the last one with length higher than 50 for me was this one Fraser Fraser and Neve limited that's a nice looking pattern except uh, just after breakout I had a very strong pullback but now We'll probably notice that if you take the the second, third, and fourth turning points, and you add the breakout, this where it turned around, this will probably make a new turning point, and I will probably find this under our emerging patterns. So, in fact, let's move to onto the emerging patterns. Um, so, just to summarize, we've got I've got I had that Gallant company in my list, that that Gallant Venture, that was nice and um, and Jardine Matheson Holdings. Those are the two opportunities I'd like to follow. Now at this point you have to back it up with other information. You can't just go on it blindly. Um, you know, certainly from where I'm sitting I know nothing about the companies. Um, if you know something else about them that might give you a better idea if you know fundamentally listen this is not a great company then you know scrap it. If you know it is a blue chip stock uh, you might want to take some more time, spend some more time and, and doing some more research on it. So my second strategy, I'm just going to look at emerging chart patterns for now. It's a different, I'm, I'm looking at this from a different point of view because with the breakouts I'm looking for uh, patterns that have consolidated into, they've been kind of pushed into a corner, they've broken out nicely, um, they must have been well formed. I was also looking uh, at the initial trend. Um, a nice initial trend for me is a, was a good, uh, a good supporting a bit of information and also a strong breakout. Now with the emerging patterns I'm looking at it from a slightly different angle. Now I'm trying to look for patterns where the, <coughs> where the, the slopes of the support and resistance lines are not um, converging too sharply. I want I want a, a channel um, or a very open mouth type of um, area, this area that follows after the pattern in which the pattern can bounce uh, in between. 
Now, just looking at this very first one that was um, selected by default, the price has already risen to a level very close to that yellow dotted resistance line. So this is going literally minutes away from being moved into the expired trading opportunities tab. Um, I'm just going to follow the same strategy looking for uh, patterns of length 50 or higher. This is the Singapore exchange. Mm, I don't like this price graph. It's a little bit choppy. It looks a little bit illiquid for me. And yeah, there's also a little bit of convergence. Uh, look, if you want to take a chance on this one, I would say possibly yeah, you can you can go long on this one, but I wouldn't not at this point. So let's look at the next view. CSE Global. Oh, and by the way, what I'm also going to look at, I'm going to jump over the triangles and only go. Um, to look at the descending triangles, ascending triangles, channels, wedges. Um, so this one is a descending triangle. It, it, I feel a bit smothered in this area, so I'm not going to continue with this one. The next is an ascending triangle. It's not quite over 50, but yeah, it's quite volatile. It's got a little bit of choppiness, but you see, this is a nice open range. This is the kind of thing that I'm looking for where the distance from where the price is now and where it where my arrow points to the opposite um, line the support resist in this case the resistance line there's a bit of room to maneuver and I see it's done it quite a lot of times in the past so so expecting it to continue to that resistance line is not too much of a long shot so I'm gonna add UOB to my list here uh, my list of <coughs> emerging patterns channel I'll click on obviously except it's a little bit short this one yeah it's n it's not too bad it's not too great either let's see what else we've got the next one ascending but this is too short you see ascending triangle uh, yeah oh this looks horrible when you see something like this um, you can you can actually see the price points the units in which so this is like a penny stock it goes from three dollars ninety two to ninety three to ninety four uh, very very little liquidity so immediately if you see something like that shut it down and move along let me see if there's something a little bit longer Singtel ascending triangle fifty bars same thing this doesn't look very nice um, I've got an ascending triangle here of Singtel no, this looks horrible as well. Let's just look at the next one for just for kicks. No, it's here again. I'm, I've chosen a triangle. It's a little bit too constricting for me. Channel up, SPH. Mm, this is a little bit more interesting. I'm just gonna. Um, zoom in quickly to see what is happening uh, you see this is an interesting case here because the the although my um, direction of this pattern is is downwards toward the support line um, the price has gone very close to that support line and it's turned back so in fact that type of price action is very much in line with what we're expecting from an emerging pattern to keep on bouncing between these two levels up and down up and down up and down so looking at emerging patterns I'm actually putting on the hat of a swing trader and this type of price action is what I would be expecting and it's it is nice for me so even though my pattern says trade down I might actually you know jump on this wagon and l wait for it to continue going up but um, that will be a little bit too speculative for me at this stage. SPH, that's the same one. I'm going to continue moving down. I just quickly want to see Fraser and Neve. Remember, this was the one that we saw under the, under the completed chart patterns as well. I wonder if there's anything else under this one. Let me just quickly... what I've done here is I've just sorted on this this column now this is the only one the only emerging uh, chart pattern
excuse me, the only emerging chart pattern um, for Fraser and Neve uh, on this active uh, on this tab of active trading opportunities. Um, let me just jump back to the age view. Where will we? Ascending triangle channel. Singtel has a couple of rectangles. No, once again, very illiquid on this time frame. So I'm not going to go with that. Let's just see the UOP rectangle. This looks a bit better for me, except once again, after the pattern was identified, uh, it didn't go in the expected direction, but it's still very nicely within the range, and it is making a type of a move. So um, you may consider joining this the strain upwards back to the support line. So to summarize for my emerging patterns, what I'm looking at is this this the wideness of this mouth here between the the um <clears throat> the resistance line and the support line. It is a nice open breathing space for me to to see the price uh, bouncing up and down. Those are nice trading opportunities with emerging chart patterns. Once again though, um you have to back up your information. You have to back up the opportunities that you find here with other information. Um, typically, you'd be looking for uh, n not um, what, you, what we call non-trending patterns. You won't be looking for non-trending patterns. You want trending patterns. So you won't be looking at your triangles. You want channels and wedges, typically, possibly ascending, excuse me, ascending triangles, ascending, descending triangles, because they they tend to have you know sometimes because the one of at least the one for a descending triangle your your support is horizontal and for an ascending triangle your resistance is horizontal so since one of the lines is horizontal you've got a better chance of having a, a more of an open range at the end of it okay the next strategy I want to look at is um, key levels so I'm selecting <coughs> first I look at breakouts then at approaches breakouts again they kind of mimic the um, the the completed patterns because because it is a breakthrough it's a breakthrough the 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 key level um, whether it's a support or resistance line and we we're looking for a strong breakout we're looking for momentum and we're also looking for significance in other words what makes this a significant level now this uh, this um, uh, um, significance indicator over here it's the same as it's a, it's actually a quality indicator it literally counts the number of touching points that this um, um, this key level has encountered now this is indicated as a three three touching points we see there's probably one over there one over here um, and one somewhere over here but it actually looks like there are quite a few more they probably just didn't get within the um, what is called the the error margin, um, but I think I'm counting for myself here one, two, three, four, five, six, possibly six touching levels. <clears throat> the, also, the other thing is it doesn't count every single point; it only looks initially at the um, the turning points. So in other words, where the graph has made a um, has changed from downward to upward or upward to downward. So I like this one. This one is nice. The only thing I don't like is the fact that straight after breakout, we had a, a bullish bar. It went in the wrong direction immediately. So it might just be a pullback, but that's put me off already. Let's see what Singtel has to offer. Uh, it's a little bit short and it's a little bit close. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't jump onto this one. Hong Leong Asia. Mm, I like this one because you see this range over here. <clears throat> Once again, we had a lot of sort of price action very close to this line. It stayed quite close to this um, support line over here. So that has made the support line for me a little bit stronger. Even though it's only got a, you see the quality rating of 3, which means that only 3 um, touching points have registered on it. And also, if you look at the downward trend, it has trended down, and there was a little bit of a follow-through. So this is definitely something. I'm making a note of that. Hong Leong Asia. 
that's for my what are we looking at uh, breakouts breakout key levels Ah, oh, look here the name comes up again Fraser and Neve um, now when I'm looking in this strategy when I'm looking at key levels both for approaches and breakouts this column for me is very important the quality column because because there's really only a single quality indicator and that is how many times has this level been tested in the past the minimum is three but it can go up to ten and obviously the more times it has been tested the um, the, 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 the more times it's been confirmed and the more times uh, you know we've basically realized that this really is an important level so <clears throat> the expectation is that it'll just require a lot of momentum to actually break through this level um, so that's an important it's an, it's a very important um, thing to look at with with key levels so from that point of view it is it's got six um, testing points registered which is great for me the general trend is sort of upwards after breakout uh, it, the follow through is in the right direction so this is something I would follow as well Frazier and Neve mm. I just wanna so this is a this is a bullish pattern I'm just going to quickly flip back to my chart patterns view to see what the, uh, this Fraser and Eve one was a bearish. Ah, remember, so yeah, now I remember. We were actually expecting to find this under emerging patterns um, with a pullback and it certainly went in a bearish direction. So so this was a pattern that I definitely wasn't going to follow, follow in the in the bear, uh in the bearish direction but I thought maybe if something bullish came up I would be interested in that so here in my breakouts is something different that was over 79 days this is over 65 time 4 hour bar so it's on a much shorter time frame but it's in the same direction so already I've got a little bit of a of a um, confirmation Oh, that's a new one that came through now as well okay so that's on my list we're keeping with that one <coughs> S&P not a bad pattern very nice the, the, the key level here is a very nice support level except the only problem is once again that little pullback I'll, ha I'll, I'll keep an eye on this one over the next few, few hours it's a it's a 30 minute pattern but it's over quite a lot of 30 minute bars so um, maybe we'll we'll revisit this in a day or so see if it, it turned around and, and tested that level again or broke through it again overseas Chinese banking corporation OCBC it's a little bit short term 22 length I'm, not, I'm gonna jump over that one Olam International yeah I'm also not crazy about this one you see because it's a little bit choppy it seems a little bit illiquid there was a, a, a breakout that was sort of alright but then it pulled back again nah I'll leave that one let's now look at the approaches now approaches um, I like very much because because it kind of it's similar with emerging patterns where you're kind of opening up a range so the price has already moved from a particular place and we expect and we're simply expecting it to move back to that place um, so that that is for me a very nice type of opportunity normally um, I'm just gonna go down this list that first one didn't grab me Genting now this is nice again you see here again I've got that openness that little bit of space that breathing space that says this is where we are now that's where we found uh, resistance before around um, 347 we've got a uh, nice room to move back there and we've just recently been there so it's not um, uh, completely inconceivable that we would move back there <coughs> so I'm adding 
MCSI to my list under approaches. Yeah, the name UAB comes up again. Once again, not bad, although it's a shorter term pattern. It's a nice little bit of space for me to move from 18, around about 1850 to 1866. Let's see if we got anything better. Ah. Oh, okay, so this is the same pattern really. You see, in this case, we've got two patterns. The one is uh, six, uh, 240 minute over 33, and the other is a 60 minute pattern over 98 bars. In effect, they probably add up to about the same thing. Uh, if I if I multiply my 33 four hour bars by by four, I get just over 120, which is not too far off from 98, which is very close to 100. So it's it's really we're looking at the same pattern there. I like that one. I'm going to add it. UOB. <coughs> OCBC. That looks nice. You see, we're a little bit late because it's already four candles old. It's already started moving in the right direction. We can still jump on it, maybe, and uh, use this opportunity. Let's see what else we got here. That was length 73. This is length 59. Ah, okay, so this is interesting. This one, they're the same granularity. Both are 240-minute bars. This one has already moved right up to the resistance uh, line. So also, any minute, this pattern will be moved from the active trading opportunities tab into the expired trading opportunities tab because it's really come and gone. The opportunity is not there anymore. But um, you see, the other pattern goes up to this 9.04 level. So it's a, it's a um, pattern that spans over a little bit more time. Um, and so there is a little bit more... Um, room to maneuver. Actually what will happen is this breakout, if this pattern breaks through this level significantly it'll it'll prompt you uh, um, that it'll you know it'll be a move to the next resistance level which is not too far away but still there, there could be a little bit of profit in there. It's a nice long-term one, Yan Lord Land Um, my initial reaction with this pattern is it doesn't look too great. These these spikes are not great touching points. It doesn't really give me a strong sense of support. It almost looks like it is suspended in the air. However, what I might want to look at is, you know, if you're using another charting package to draw your um, your lines, I would draw a, a, a downward sloping support line and a a resistance line almost like a like a descending triangle um, I don't know as as a support level uh, this doesn't really grab me that much I would rather move on look at the next opportunity mm, this one's similar it's a little bit stilted and we actually it's a, it's a couple of candles old, six candles old already. We've already sort of come halfway. I don't think it's a great opportunity anymore. MCSI we've we've seen before. What was the other one? It was this one. So it was a much shorter term pattern that we did like. And here's a much longer term pattern. So these two are actually confirming in each other, supporting each other. The other one was. It went up to what 347, I think. Yeah, three forty seven point eight was where where this expectation was. Oh look, sorry, I'm lying. This is actually the longer term pattern. <clears throat> so the longer term pattern is a four hour pattern. It spans over forty two bars of four hours each. So um could we do a quick calculation, two forty times forty two. Two forty times forty-two. That's ten thousand minutes. The uh, the smaller one. Let's 
minutes every year. That's 183 times 60 minutes. It's also 10. So it's about it's a similar similar price range you're looking at. Similar time frame we're looking at. Um, but definitely supporting each other, both expecting to go in the in the right range. So I'm adding. Uh, I've got MCSI there. If I'm just keeping with that. And this one has also look. It's come and gone. S and P. This one has happened. So now um, we've looked at a couple of different strategies for distilling um, opportunities. In my list now, I've already got um, a short list of out of the possible. Uh, let's see if we if we check everything. If we include all the different patterns and types of analysis, you see um, yeah next to where it says active trading opportunities, there's the number 94. So out of the 94 possible trading opportunities that Auto Charters has distilled for me, now remember this is 94 out of literally thousands, probably you know I don't know two, three, five, ten thousand, depending depending on how many different stock exchanges you're looking at. So it's already distilled it quite a lot. And I've taken now, well, I've been really leisurely trying to explain to you um, as I've gone along, pr probably taken about half an hour to, to distill this list of 94 down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In fact, now I've got UOB that I've found under uh, emerging chart patterns and I've also got it under my approaches. So, so those two are consolidated. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven actually. Seven names that I, that I, that I want to look at in a little bit more detail. Um, <clears throat> now, what am I looking at next? Now I'm looking for things where, where um, I've got more than one type of analysis, more than one type of pattern. I'm looking at patterns that form over more than one um, time granularity. So I've got long-term patterns and short-term patterns, both pointing in the same direction for the same stock. And then... If that's not enough, if I'm left thinking I'm still not 100% sure, then definitely g um, look at what is the, you know, what's in the news. What, what do the other analysts say? Um, speak to your fellow traders, get a bounce ideas off, and and try and and fill up as much opinion and analysis as you can around a stock before you place a trade. So that remember, it's it's a it's a game of of odds. It's a game of uh, chance and luck a lot of the time. So what we're trying to do with this is we're trying to increase our odds at winning. You can't win every time, that's for sure. Um, but uh, what we've seen from the order charters patterns, our targets are reached about 70% of the time. So already that gives you pretty good odds. Um, add to that your own analysis, uh, you know, a, a broad market view. Um, you'll just increase your odds even more. So. Um, that's the approach I would suggest you to take. One more thing I want to quickly show you that you might also want a nice game you want to play is uh, I haven't added Fibonacci patterns into my analysis. That's just my own preference. I'm not really strong on Fibonacci analysis. But like for example, if I've um, included all the analysis in my results filter and I filter on the symbols column uh, then basically what it does is it groups my symbols alphabetically and here I can immediately see what is happening on um, on a particular stock over you, you know what are all the open op open trades open opportunities the active opportunities on a particular stock Fraser and Eve is the first one that, that caught my eye because we've been talking about it just now uh, we've got three bullish resistance levels We've got two emerging bearish patterns. One of them is Fibonacci pattern and another bearish completed pattern. Now, I remember this bearish completed one. That was that didn't really count as a bear. It counted more as a bull for me. So, uh, you know, maybe you just want to quickly page through these ones. I remember I liked that one because it, because it was on my list of breakouts. Uh, this is a much smaller one. Yeah, that was the same one, just in a smaller time frame. That was the same as the first one, I remember. This flag. 
doesn't really bother me as a bearish signal. We've got an ABCD pattern. Now, this is an emerging ABCD pattern, which means there's still quite a lot that needs to happen before I take it very seriously. The price has to continue up to this point, 7.27, and it'll have to turn around uh, before I will find resistance at one of these levels. So it's not really that pertinent for me in my list. So still, I think it's a bull, that, that one. Gallant, I remember, was my one of my favorite um, emerging patterns, I mean uh, breakout patterns, but that's the only one. There's no supporting, nothing supporting it. Genting, for example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, did I count right now? One, two, three, yeah, seven, seven patterns. I've got one, two, three bearish and four bullish. So it's almost 50 50. What's MCSI? Bullish, bullish, bearish, bullish, bullish, bullish. MCSI, look, you know, it's got a lot of bullish signals. So that's a, this is just a nice way for you to quickly scan over and see for a particular instrument before you trade it. Just see what else is out there. Just get a, a scan of all the different types of analysis on a particular symbol. I think the most we had so far was about seven, right? Yeah, so that just, um, that's just as an aside. So... <clears throat> What I tried to do today was to give you a, a sort of um, a, a verbal commentary on what goes through my mind when I look at in, and evaluate order charters patterns, what grabs me on them and what doesn't, and how I go through um, identifying what, what opportunities are suitable for me personally as a trader. And uh, your style may very well be quite different, um, but... Uh, you know, when you're using a tool like this, it helps sometimes just to see how somebody else uses it to d for you to decide, yes, I like that way, or, you know, I'd rather use it in a different kind of way. So, if you've got any questions, we've got a few minutes left to answer them. Um, let me just see what I can see from what you guys have been asking me until now. Um, Roger asked, can you explain what is the length about? Um, now, I'm not sure... Uh, I've, I've been talking about the length quite a lot but literally this column the second last column on the right length that number literally means the number of candles or bars in the graph and it's very important to look at that number in conjunction with um, the interval so literally what this means this pattern has a length of 99 which means if I was going to count the candles or the bars from where the pattern started up here up to where it uh, was identified over here I should have 99 candles it's going to be a bit painful so I'm not going to do that right now um, but Roger what you want to look at also is the interval remember it's a it's an equity so your um, unlike Forex where the markets are open 24 hours this market is only open for probably about eight hours a day so you'll probably only get about two two four hour bars um, during every trading day on this graph so it spans over um, uh, let's divide this number by by two roughly so but it spans over about 50 trading days uh, which is about 10 weeks in real time um, it's important that you that you look at the length together with the interval together with the market times to decide hang on how long when did we start at this pattern and uh, w what is this time over here it's the 30th of the third it's, I don't know how many this is one day at a time yeah it looks like days so it's probably about the 25th 22nd 28th thereabouts I don't know I'm not sure exactly what the date was when this pattern started but the end of March and uh, yeah it's about a month ago a little bit more than a month ago um, <clears throat> is there any reason why you don't use daily BA charts instead of hourly 
mm, not sh uh, bar charts I guess what you're saying well as you could have seen we we use daily uh, hourly four hourly thirty minute sixty minute they're all mixed together just look at this interval column you'll see um what the what the interval is auto chartist actually scans on five different intervals actually there are more uh, it has the ability to scan on one minute data five minute data ten minute data you know even on tick data the thing is on a time granularity that that's small that that's slight th there's no time for traders to actually start thinking about the price and deciding whether they want to move with it or not so there's no time for the market psychology mechanism to mature and make a chart pattern form so all the patterns that you pick up on those very small time frames are actually really just noise it's not um, it doesn't really uh, 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 fit in with with, uh, with the fundamentals of the charting theory so that's why we just don't include them um, but we do scan like for forex and very liquid instruments we scan on a 15 minute basis and the others from 30, 60 minute, 4 hourly and end of day is the chart a live charting during trading hours? Um, yes definitely um, so while the market data is coming through um, for example if you have a 30 minute um, graph uh, let's look quickly find one here. Look at this one. I'm just going to enlarge this quickly. So while this market is open, you'll see um, there's this dotted line, this vertical dotted line. That's when the pattern was identified. Then after that, there are a bunch of candles that are colored, but they're not colored in. They're only outlined in either green or red. <clears throat> Excuse me. So these outlined candles are basically what has happened during market hours subsequently to this time when the pattern was identified. Excuse me. Um, so while the market is open, you will see every 30 minutes there will be a new candle. So every time every time you request that image again every time you click on this on this pattern there'll be a new bar every 30 minutes so they do update and of course when we identify new patterns they will come through and you'll be notified by them as they as they are identified in real time um, can I show you a live chart now? Well, I, I can't because the market is closed. But you can use this application during live market hours. These are these these patterns that we're looking at the graphs. They're actually images, so you can right-click on it and you can save the image as something. It's a static image, but every time the image is requested, it um, it is it is refreshed with the latest data. If I can put it that way. Um, let's just see what other questions there are. Is order charters more suited for short term intraday or long term weeks months trading style? Um, <clears throat> to be quite honest with you, I think that the order charters patterns are they tend to be more successful the longer the term is. That's why I pay so much attention to the length column. Um, if you're looking at it intraday you know in one hour out the next hour kind of trading um, order charters will probably give you a lot more false hits um, false positives um, simply because there's just so much more noise there's so much more risk at, the, at that time frame in the market um, but the more time you allow for for the market psychology mechanism to work and it really needs people need to you know, traders need to really think about what they're doing for it to, for it to mature. Yeah, I, I definitely think over more days, uh, even weeks and months, if you have a very, very long-term pattern, we only, I mean, we only scan up to end-of-day uh, granularities.
but uh, most definitely at the end of the um yeah some uh, some span over weeks and and even longer so so you can certainly look at take a longer term view especially for equities if you if you have a buy and hold type of strategy for equities that can definitely work Ah, sorry, of course I can show you, I didn't think about that, I can show you live charts on Forex. So, yeah, for example, the latest patterns that were found, GBP, USD, they were found at 20 past 8. What is your time now in Singapore? It's half past 8. So give you an example. I'm just going to scroll down where there's a little bit of history in the candles. Uh, let's look at Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. It was found. It's a it's an hourly pattern. It was found at 11 o'clock or sort of midday your time, and this is really what has happened subsequently. We've gone towards, continued towards the the expected um, resistance level, but it's kind of turned around again. So each of these were updated since 11 this morning. So we've got uh, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock, well, unless I counted wrong. 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so this is the 8 o'clock bar that is completed there. Uh, Zubeda, I'm not sure I understand your question. How come with Forex the news always late when we receive and the market moves much earlier? Do you mean uh, what kind of news? Do you mean that the patterns come in late? The thing is, um, <coughs> let's look at Euro dollar. You must remember that often a lot of chart patterns, for example, only break out once the market starts to move. Um, with with the emerging patterns and with approaches, the the thing is a little bit different. We'll, then we're looking at a turnaround and a direction, not so much breakout and momentum. So yes, it is actually quite right. The market would start to move. With the move comes the m momentum with which it breaks through support and resistance levels. And with a breakout, you expect a further move. So it has to start moving first before, before the patterns can, can be identified, really, the, the type of breakout patterns. Um, but if you were looking at emerging patterns, you might, find, you might be able to spot the, you know, the right kind of moves a little bit ahead of time. Okay, I I hope I've uh, been able to answer most of your questions. Um, the time has caught up with us now. We have to finish off the session. Um, I want to say thank you very much for your attention, for um, joining us this evening with for this webinar. The recording will be made available, um, and uh, we will definitely look at um, doing some more sessions for you in the future. It's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope um, I wish you all the best in your trading, and hope you you make a great success. So, um, yeah, perhaps next time we can take a look at forex or some other types of instruments. Thanks again, and all the best. Best of luck with your trading.